Hello and welcome back to another Design Clips here at W Plus 9. This is Dawn Wolfslegel and we're continuing to take a look at our new Holiday 2016 collection. So today I'm going to show you how to use your die cuts as stamps. Now I've done this before but I wanted to show you how it's especially good when you have these large detailed die cuts like this and you're not quite sure what else you can do with them. So we'll be using the Woodland Basic dies and we'll be stamping on the Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper. But first I have to make my stamps. So I'm going to pull out the uh, images that I want to turn into stamps and then I'm going to die cut these from Fun Foam. And this is just that inexpensive Fun Foam that you can pick up at your local craft store like Michael's. Uh, it's got a great profile on it and it's inexpensive. So cuts beautifully through your die cut machine with our steel rule dies. Now once you've got these all cut out, we need to turn them into stamps. So we're gonna temporarily adhere them to our acrylic blocks. And I like to use a temporary adhesive like this Tombow one here. I'm just gonna cover the top of the block in a big enough area to hold the die cut image. And then I'm just gonna place them right onto the block. And then I have a little makeshift stamp here. And I do recommend using a separate block for each die cut. It's just gonna be easier, especially since we'll be using distress inks and water to stamp with. It would be quite messy to have to remove your die cut and replace it and remove it and replace it. So it's just, it's easier if you have an acrylic block for each, but it's definitely possible if you don't have as many acrylic blocks. Now I'm gonna choose my colors. And for mine, I'm using aged mahogany, festive berries. And then for my greens, I'm gonna use crushed olive, mowed lawn, and then I am going to be using evergreen bow. Now you could choose any colors that you want. It's really up to you. I was just going for a more traditional look here. So what you're gonna do is just press that Fun Foam stamp into the dye ink and then use a wet paintbrush to just activate that ink. And then you'll just stamp it on your paper. And you'll see here you get this nice, imperfect watercolored look with little to no effort. Sometimes you don't even need to re-wet your brush. If there's enough water still in your brush, you could just ink it up again, re-wet it, and then stamp it down. Now I will say that normally I would start with my largest element first and stamp it, which would be the bird. Um, but this was just my trial run, so I just turned on the camera and went for it. But I would, I would suggest starting with your largest element first, stamping that down, and then moving on to your next and your smallest. Now I am going to leave the bottom quarter of the page blank. I'm going to be putting my sentiment down about two thirds of the way down. So I want to leave that last quarter of the page blank with no pattern. So I'm keeping that in mind when I'm stamping my pattern. Now when I do the holly leaves, I'm picking up two colors. I'm going to stamp it into the crushed olive and then I'm also going to hit it into the mowed lawn and then move that color around and then stamp it down. Sometimes I will add more or less of each color to the stamp, but I wanna get a good variation. Sometimes I want an all um, olivey green color, and sometimes I want it to have a little lean more toward the blue, which is where the mowed lawn comes in without being too blue. So you're just gonna continue to build your pattern. I usually like to work in threes and in triangles and then fill in any gaps with any extra, actually fill in the gaps with anything that'll fit at that point. Once your page starts to get too full, you're just going to pick up whichever one will fill in that gap. And trust me, nobody's gonna be looking and saying, oh, you've got two birds too close together or you've got two pine bows too close together. Nobody cares. <laughs> You can vary the amount of water that you're adding to the foam stamp here so that you get different amounts of um, detail in the stamped image. And if you by chance don't get enough water on it, you can just use your brush to kind of smooth it out if you want. This is one of my favorite techniques because it is so easy and it is so forgiving. I think that its imperfections are what is so appealing about it. So. If you are scared of trying watercoloring or freehand watercoloring, this is a great technique to kind of uh, just kind of dip your toes in the water and see if you like the outlook or the outcome and see if it's something that you would like to delve more into. So now my panel is all complete and I went ahead and I created another one off camera to use to create our tag. We're going to use the negative space cut from one of the tags to show that pattern stamp paper peeking through. And this is really simple to do when we use the Christmas tag die set, which is also included in our holiday 2016 release. 
I'm going to go ahead and take care of all of my die cutting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that tag from our Dove Gray cardstock. And then I'm also going to be using that Christmas die cut that's included in this die set for our sentiment on our card. And I'll be cutting that out three times because I want to stack them all on top of each other and give a nice, thick, almost chipboard-like sentiment. So I'll die cut this three times and then we can work on our tag. Now we want to create that window that the pattern that we stamped shows through. So I'm going to take the word Mary that's included in this die set and we're going to cut it from the center of our dove gray tag. And I'll cut another of the tags from that stamped paper and then I will layer these on top of each other. I'm going to set this off to the side for now and I'll finish it in just a little bit. Now let's get back to our main card. We need to create that sentiment. So we're going to take those three Christmas die cuts and we're going to layer them on top of each other and use them as the beginning of our sentiment in our Christmas card. There are several ways that you could adhere this. Um, I'm going to be using spray adhesive today. This puts an even layer of adhesive across the entire back of the die cut. Now if you had stick it paper, you could have put stick it paper to the back of the cardstock before you die cut it and then you would have release paper on the back and a full film of sticky on the back of the die cut. However, I didn't have any on hand so spray adhesive works great for me. Now you also notice here that this is a thin die cut. It's very delicate so it's easy for the words to get out of, out of shape or out of alignment. So I use the negative space from your die cut just to make sure that my word is straight and it's all even that it didn't get twisted or warped. I'm just going to repeat this process with the remaining layers. I'll spray some adhesive on the back, then I will line them up on top, press them down, and when I have all three down, I'm good to go. And by stacking three layers together, I gave it a little extra height, which helps it to stand out against that busy background, even though it's a light color. So for both of the sentiments, I'm going to be using the Be Merry Sentiment Stamp Set. Again, this is another one that is new to our Holiday 2016 collection, and I will be heat embossing these both in white. Treating my paper with a little anti-static tool, as always, inking it up with Versamark, which is a clear sticky ink, and then applying some white Hero Arts embossing powder. This is one of my favorites. This and the Wow Super Fine. Those are my two faves. And then I will hit that with my heat tool to melt it down, and trim this out and it's good to go. But I felt it still needed something. Um, it just wasn't popping enough to me. So I decided to add a strip of glitter right between the transition of the plain paper and the pattern. So right where the pattern ends, I felt like it needed a little bit of a transition and I thought a strip of glitter would be perfect because it's the holidays and the holidays call for glitter, of course. <laughs> so I'm using some Be Creative tape here. And this is a double-sided, extremely sticky tape. So I'm using my grid mat there to help me make sure that I've got it on straight. There's a lot of horizontal lines running right, right on top of each other. So if it's just even a little crooked, it's going to show. It's, it's going to be obvious. I'm going to trim off the excess, and then I will release the top paper. Release the top paper. I will peel back the top release paper <laughs> and then I'm going to pour some glitter on. And I'm using some Martha Stewart coarse glitter, so I want to make sure that this is really burnished in well. So I'm going to use my Teflon bone folder to just run it all across the top of that glitter and it's going to firmly push and press any of that loose glitter deep into that um, adhesive and make sure that we don't have too much fallout. To adhere the sentiment, I'm going to use some foam tape. I know that that will stick to that glitter. It can be hard to find an adhesive that will stick over glitter, but this foam tape is perfect. So I'm just going to line that up right here, center it with that glitter strip, and that will finish up the card. I just adhered the panel to an A2 top folding card base. Now to finish off the tag, I used that same Be Merry Sentiment stamp set. Heat embossed the word Christmas in white and embellished it with a few die cuts from the same Woodland Basics die set. If you want to see how I made these die cuts, you can click on the card here at the top of the screen, and that will take you to how I created these watercolor die cuts. So there you have a quick and easy way to make your die cuts double as stamps. I have been really gravitating toward these fresh modern designs for Christmas this year and I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Remember this is all a part of our holiday 2016 collection which is now available at wplus9.com as well as at your some of your favorite retailers. So be sure to head over and take a look. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!